What up everybody, it's your boy Jester James here coming at you with another YouTube video. Today is going to be a real quick video today because I'm going to be answering a question that a lot of folks have been asking me. Following up from when we were performing Memory Forensics, one of the tools that we used was Volatility. So Volatility was the tool that we used to perform Memory Forensics. But a lot of folks were asking, how exactly do you actually take a memory capture? So very much like you can take a disk image and image it and get a disk image out of a, a computer drive and you've, you've got tools that will go and do that. How do you go and capture live memory on a machine that's still running? Even more so, how would you go and take a disk image and basically how do you acquire that evidence to begin with? So over the bat, right, I've got volatility here, but in order for us to capture live memory, there's a few ways that we can actually do that. So one of the ways that is really easy and it was with a tool that's already in our arsenal here is FTK Imager. So I have FTK Imager, but there's very much like a lot of other things that you can do in life and really just performing forensics in general. There's a bunch of different ways that you can actually go about doing something. So I'm going to provide y'all with a couple other ways that you can also capture memory. So for Windows memory specifically, you can use FTK Imager, but you can also use Magnets RAM Capture. So I don't have the Magnets tool installed, but you can go and snag that over at magnetforensics.com. I'll put a link in the description here. And basically, just fill out this form here, and they'll send you the links to get all set up as the tool is free. However, simply because I have FTK Imager already pre-installed, I'm going to be leveraging that to kind of showcase how you can go and capture memory. Now, the process is going to be a little bit similar, so that's why I haven't gone and, and downloaded Magnet's RAM Capture tool, because really, it's, it's very intuitive, especially when you're using tools that have the GUI. So, for when you're creating a disk image, right, there's a bunch of different ways that you can actually do that. You can use FTK as well, but you can also go and use tools like DD, so you can use the DD, which is a Linux command, so you'd have to use a Linux operating system to be able to actually capture that and perform that imaging. And the DD command is a little bit more complicated, as again, that is command line, so it does have a lot more hands-on keyboard activity going on. However, I can go and break that down in another video. How, however, for us in this video, like I said, I want to make this quick and easy. So what we're going to do, we're going to pop open FTK Imager simply because that's the tool that we've already been introduced to. We've been working with that tool quite a bit, and it's already in our arsenal here. Now, before I do that, I also want to point out for Linux memory captures, there's an open source tool called Lime or Linux Memory Extractor. Now, this tool is also a command line tool. However, it provides full Android memory acquisition in addition to the Linux operating system that you might want to capture memory on if you're going and acquiring evidence. So there's some, there's some on the wiki page, on, on the GitHub page, there's a lot of good information and resources for you to actually go and break that down. It's got examples and you can go and actually go and, and follow along here as, as the memory is acquired using things like Netcat and performing it over the network as opposed to doing it locally and things along those lines. So simply because Windows is a lot more prominent, I'm going to be showcasing a Windows memory capture. However, Lime is a tool that you would use for leveraging Linux memory captures. So that being said, right, you can go FTK Imager right here and hit the download now button, but I've already gone and covered this in a previous video, so we do have the tool already installed. Now this is how intuitive and, and simple that going and acquiring evidence and when you have tools that the GUI like this really are. One of the ways that you do is that you could load this executable up on a remote drive, so you have a thumb drive, you plug that into the operating system, that the computer that's running that you want to acquire and claim as evidence. And what you do is you run it off that removable device, off that thumb drive. So first things first, you go into File. You can hit Create Disk Image. And what that does is, so the source of the evidence, obviously in this case we have a physical drive. So this is that this is the drive that I have here, and it'll hit Finish. And that's that's it for creating that disk image there. It's as easy as going five, go to, going to File, Create Disk Image. Simple as that. Same thing for memory with FDK, and that's why I'm showcasing FDK, simply because, again, that's what we have pre-installed, 
and it's as simple as just going to file and hitting capture memory. So destination path, you can have whatever, where, wherever you want it to output. So if I open up browse, you can go navigate to the whatever folder you want to do it. You can put it in downloads, documents, whatever. However, you would put that file on your removable drive. So you, whenever you're performing evidence acquisition, you have to make sure you have a removable, a removable device in order to actually put that evidence onto. So if you have a 500 gig disk drive that you're going to take an image of or get, grab memory from, you have to make sure that you have at least 500 gigabytes for that, where, for wherever you're going to put that disk image or memory file. So in this instance, right, the destination file, file name is gonna be memdump.mem because it's going to be the memory file. And usually you can include the page file and you could also create an AD1 file as well. However, for the most part, unchecking these boxes is fine on its own. Just make sure you put a, a, des a destination path and the capture memory button will enable you to just click that and it'll start capturing memory. Now I'm not gonna click that because this process takes a lot about a lot of time. And simply put, right, when you're acquiring evidence, it's going to take a lot of time. So what's going on is it's actually gonna create a, co a copy of that disk image and put it in the virtual uh, VHD format, for example, or the DD format if you're doing it via the command line using DD. There's a few different types of evidence formats that you can actually go and acquire. Um, for memory, there's .mem or there's .vmem, and for the V, right, that's for virtual memory in instances. So a lot of the times you can also have virtual hard disks, right, that's VHD. Very much like we have in our VirtualBox or our VMware Pro, those disk images, you can actually go and leverage those. They have VHD files already, so you can actually go and leverage those files without having to go that extra mile of acquiring that evidence in that virtual system itself. Simply put, because that system is already virtualized. So there you have it. That's just real simple, real easy. Just load up a tool like FDK Imager and you go to File and you hit create disk image or capture memory. That's really how easy it is. Now, that being said, right, don't forget about simple things like chain of custody when you're handling evidence and things along those lines, right? Because you want to maintain the integrity of that disk image and that memory file. A lot of times, right, you, it's similar to the way you do it in law enforcement. So if you're a police officer and you're taking evidence from the crime scene, you got to make sure that that evidence doesn't get tampered with or anything along those lines. And that's an analogy or, or an example to case put for folks that are like us, right? Performing digital forensics and things along those lines, you have to maintain that that disk image is pristine and the same as the way it was on that system that got hit with a, whatever cyber attack that you're actually going and acquiring it for. So like I said prior, real quick, simple video. That's about uh, acquiring evidence, acquiring memory specifically, and acquiring disk image as well. Specifically using FDK Imager, but as I said prior, there's a few different other tools that you can use. However, right, FDK Imager is simple. You can load it up on a removable drive and then plug in a hard, dri a hard drive that you can go and leverage, right? So like plug in your thumb drive with FDK Imager. You get a hard drive like this, plug that in as well and you'll have FDK loaded up and then your destination for that file would be on that removable hard drive. And that hard drive would be what would be considered evidence and that's how you get that going and that process started. Hope you all found that valuable. Hope that, hope that all kind of makes sense and, and you're able to go and start to create your own disk images, start to create your own memory files for things like practice cases or just practicing along those lines when you're going to have to go and be physical in an environment and actually do things along those lines. And if you did find it valuable, please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.